This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Okay, so it's Tuesday, and that means I'm going to be blethering away for 10 minutes or thereabouts on the topic of five of my favourite things in a particular category. And today, we're looking at Pink Floyd, my top five Pink Floyd performances. So let's get straight to it, beginning with... Echoes. Yes, indeed. Now, um, Pink Floyd... I think is a classic example of one of those bands that took a little while to, you know, find themselves, if you like. It's not the kind of thing that would happen these days. You know, once upon a time, a band would get like a multiple album deal from the record company and, you know, they would be allowed, given time to grow and experiment and find out what it was they were good at and how to hone their sound. Not That just doesn't happen these days. And Pink Floyd, I think, are... Uh, a classic example of this, all of the early stuff, you know, I mean, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, Saucer Full of Secrets, Umma Gumma, all that sort of stuff, you can just take that and leave it as far as I'm concerned. It does nothing for me. It just, it's not what I think of when I think of, um, like, the Pink Floyd sound. It, it's not my cup of tea. Apologies if it's yours, but it's not mine. For me, the metal album from, was it 1971, is where it really all started to coalesce. And this is, you know, we get the beginnings of what we think of these days as the Pink Floyd sound. And, you know, much in the same way as I was talking about ELO a couple of weeks ago, and, um, you know, I mentioned the um, that track Showdown, which was like the, where we where we first got what was recognisably the, the electric light orchestra sound that they went forward with. I think the... Uh, um, this album, Metal, is where the Pink Floyd sound just crystallises and, okay, now we know what we're doing. And for me, my favourite track off that album is Echoes, and that's why it's the first one on the list. So there you go. Next. Brain Damage, Eclipse. Okay, yes, two for one. Um, it took me a while to realise that this was actually two tracks. Um, you know, I think... Because when, when I used to listen to the album on uh, cassette uh, back in the 80s, um, you know, the old thing when you, you mate used to copy a, copy the album from vinyl onto, onto a cassette, um, it was just on the little handwritten index card on that cassette. It was just written as one track. So I thought of it as one track, and they do kind of segue together. And it for me, it... it creates the perfect closing movement to uh, the, the Dark Side of the Moon album. Um, there, there was about, oh, 20, 21, 22 years ago, I went on a course um, to uh, learn how to teach music in schools, basically. And um, the, the guy who was running this course uh, was a, a real classical m music buff. And um, he... Uh, remarried later in life and um, his younger wife uh, said right I've had to put up with all your Brahms and Liszt and Mozart and Chopin for all these years you're going to listen to some of my music now and she put and she played him the, the Dark Side of the Moon album and he said and I would agree with him that this closing movement of the album is you know one of the great Work, works of art of music of the 20th century and I would definitely go along with that um, there's just that moment the, the final lyric of, the, of, of the, the whole album where the sun is eclipsed by the moon I'm saying it now and I'm getting goosebumps and when I listen to it it just it's amplified even more it's a spine tingling moment an epic closer from an epic album and you know as um as my old course tutor said, you know, one of the finest musical works of art of the 20th century. That's why it's on the list. Next. Shine on, you crazy diamond. Okay, so this basically bookends uh, the Wish You Were Here album. I mean, for a start off, when you've just, you know, produced something of the magnitude of Dark Side of the Moon, how do you follow that? Um, it would have been, you know kind of a career ending um, or career stalling uh, moment for many bands but not Pink Floyd they came straight out of the traps with a completely different sounding album still identifiably Pink Floyd sounding but a different sounding uh, Pink Floyd album 
that was equally as good. Um, and some people might, may even say better, but I wouldn't. I, th I still think Dark Side of the Moon has the edge. But Shine on Your Crazy Diamond, the way it bookends uh, the whole album. And w we know what this this uh, song is about. I'm sure you know it's about Sid Barrett. And I'm sure you already know the, uh, the tale of when they were recording uh, this track. Sid, after many years of nobody kind of having seen him or heard from him, wandered into the studio, virtually unrecognisable from his former self. And there is a sense with this song, uh, this whole album, I guess, really, but this song in particular, that it's, it's not, you know, a commercial enterprise. It's, it's just four guys. Um, you know, lamenting their, um, their long lost compadre, you know. Um, what can I tell you? It's, sorry, I've got a cough sweet on the go. The, um, the, the hair fever is strong in me today. Yeah, it's just, it's an emotional, heartfelt, wonderful, celebrate, celebratory, and at the same time, um, you know, kind of wistful and, um, rose tinted spectacles look back at the past kind of piece of music. I, I absolutely adore it. And that's why it's on the list. Next. Comfortably numb. Okay, no explanation necessary here, I'm sure, uh, so I'll keep this brief. Um, if I have to explain to you why Comfortably Numb deserves a place on anybody's list of um, Pink Floyd highlights, then if I have to explain that to you, you'll never get it. One of my guilty pleasures is um, watching these reaction videos, when I, rarely when I get the chance to watch YouTube stuff. Um, I tend to enjoy watching uh, millennial rap and hippity-hoppity, as I call it, fans, um, you know, watching classic rock performances. And on a couple of occasions, I've seen people watching... Um, or listening to rather uh, this song you know that they've never heard before and quite literally being reduced to tears that is the power of this piece of music it is absolutely sublime and I love it and that's why it's on the list next Paul's Apart yes now um, following the departure of Roger Waters uh, many people um, thought, well, that's it. Pink Floyd had done. Uh, mind you, many people had said that after the departure of Sid Barrett as well, and they were proven wrong. But I was um, a little bit more inclined to agree with the naysayers um, after the departure of Roger Waters when the album A Momentary Lapse of Reason came out. Not a bad album. Not a bad David Gilmore album is how I think of it. It certainly didn't sound like a Pink Floyd album. Roger Waters, perhaps with a hint of sour grapes, described it as a perfectly executed forgery. And yeah, I would tend to agree with that. I don't dislike A Momentary Lapse of Reason uh, or the live album that um, followed it, Delicate Sound of Thunder. I've got them and I listen to them and they're good albums, but they don't, I mean, the momentary ops of reason doesn't sound like a Pink Floyd album to me. So I was kind of in two minds when in 1994, uh, Floyd released uh, the division bell. Um, but the moment I put it on and, uh, heard that first track cluster one and, you know, so many great tracks on this album. It's, it's, it is a Pink Floyd album. It sounds like a Pink Floyd album. It's got that same sort of vibe to me that you expect from a classic Floyd album that, that there's the flow to it and, you know, that, that almost like a narrative running through it. I absolutely love the album. And for me, one of the strongest tracks on this album is Pulls Apart. Um, it's, it's a song about, well, the first verse is, um, about Sid Barrett. The, I don't know if Pink Floyd have a clause in their contract or had a clause in their contract that said that uh, every album must contain at least one Sid Barrett reference. Um, and the second verse is about Roger Waters. Cleverly, that the second verse opens with the, uh, the line, Hey You, obviously referencing the Waters song from The Wall. 
And um, like it's it's one of those songs that is um, you know the kind of thing that Springsteen started doing on Born in the USA, where it's it's written from the perspective of you know a middle aged perspective looking back rather than a young perspective looking forward with um, you know kind of wonderment and excitement at what's to come. There's a lot of there's a very much a reflective quality to this whole album and this song in particular. Um, on a musical level, the um, the way that the song just kind of goes into that slightly um, avant-garde, sound effects laden um, interlude in the middle, um, sort of shades a little bit of um, being for the benefit of Mr. Kite, that kind of thing, uh, and then comes out and merges from that in, in a double-time feel. It took me ages to, to figure out what's going on here. Why does this song suddenly sound more uplifting and celebratory as we go into the final verse? It's because the drums are playing at twice the tempo that uh, they were playing at on the on the first two verses. A brilliantly clever technique that um, I've nicked many times ever since when I've been writing my own stuff. As I say, it's an uplifting, celebrate, celebratory, joyous song that still manages to have that wistful uh, kind of and whimsical feel that um, I think does characterise some of the best of, of Pink Floyd's material. And for me, more than anything else, it's proof that that um, perhaps after a slight wobble, momentary lapse of reason, uh, Pink Floyd were back, stronger, as strong or if not stronger than ever. And that's why this one deserves a place on the list. So there you go. Those are my top five Pink Floyd performances this week. Ask me again in a couple of weeks' time, and it may be slightly different, although things like Comfortably Numb and Brain Damage Eclipse will still probably be on there. But anyway... That's what we've got for you today. Let me know what your top five uh, favourite Pink Floyd performances are. Uh, and if you can be bothered, maybe a line or two about uh, why each one deserves a place on your list. I'm gen genuinely interested uh, reading those comments when I do these kind of videos, so keep them coming. And that is pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it reasonably entertaining. And if you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it don't forget the live stream friday 5 p.m uk time where we sit and kind of talk about music and guitars and drink beer and it's a it's a great way to kick off the weekend i would love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now